I didn't eat for 30 days, which is crazy, right? But what does that have to do with events? The thing is, I was surprised by how many connections there are between fasting and hosting your own events. So what I thought I would do right now is share my experiences with you from my Juice Fast and how I think those lessons are gonna help you level up your next event. Trust me, I never expected to be sitting here right now chatting with you about my juice fast and, but here I am. <laughs> so what I did was I didn't eat from April 1st through April 30th, 2023. And as I'm recording this, it is May 4th, 2023. And on May 1st, I sat down and I journaled about all of my learnings. So I'm basically going to sit here and go through my journal with you and share with you all of the places where I feel like those lessons dovetail with events and entrepreneurship. And I think it's gonna be a fun conversation to have. So first thing is, <laughs> I got asked a lot, why Sarah? Why did you do this? And what were the results? And and that's why all when all of those questions were coming in, I, it gave me the idea of just, well, let's just connect, collect all of those questions and put them out on the podcast so everybody can hear all of the answers. I think the reason why I went into it was because it was just feeling like I needed a reset after the pandemic. And I don't know if we can say it's after the pandemic right now but I definitely was feeling more weight on my body and just more weight on my mind after that hard time and I think I looked to this as an idea of how to do a reset I also think that for a long time now I've been wanting to use juicing as um, something that was a regular practice in my life a way of kind of cleaning out the system and keeping the roads in good order. You know that saying, I think it's from, gosh, what movie is it? Is it Food Inc. or Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead? Like you just, it's hard to repair the roads when there's always cars on the road. And fasting is one of those. And I love to, to do a, as much as possible a 16 hour fast window every day. But I think juicing kind of takes it to the next level. And so, well, I thought, well, let's just get a juicer and let's give it a try. And I learned a lot, a lot, a lot. And so I'm not gonna, I don't have any specific order that I'm gonna go through these learnings, but I will say that it's just the order in which I wrote them down. I, I think, I kind of think the last one is the most important one and I don't know why it came to me last. But I don't know, stick stick with me because I think I think they're all you're gonna find something in this for you. First one is I slept less when I was on the juice fast, about an hour less. But I also got up more times during the night to go to the bathroom, and sometimes like four times a night, just crazy. And I thought it was gonna be more disruptive than it was, but it turned out okay. The reason why I bring that up as it relates to events is to know that about yourself going into an event scenario that you are going to have disrupted sleep. Whether it's the schedule of the event that's disrupting it or just your mind racing because of all the things you're thinking about or the energy of being in community with all of your people, it's gonna impact you and so what I would say is go in with a plan and also the like mental readiness that it's going to happen. And I kind of wish I'd known that going in so that I could have prepared myself mentally. But once I was aware that this is, this is a pattern and I wasn't tired during the day, I just was waking up more during the night and also having really vivid dreams, which made me feel like I wasn't sleeping the same amount, but I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't tired during the day. So I just became this routine of just getting up 
earlier than I was used to and Max got walked earlier in the day every day. <laughs> the next thing was it just takes way more produce than I ever expected to make juice. Way more. If you watch that movie, Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead, they do not touch on logistics nearly enough for my <laughs> sensibilities. And oh my gosh, this one was a shocker. So be prepared. And I think I hear that a lot from clients who are hosting events is, oh my gosh, I never expected it to be so much work. And I felt the same about the juicing. I, just, I never expected it to be so much work. I never expected for it to take so much produce. And it's one of those things with the infinity loop of confidence and competence, right? Is that just being in it will give you more competence on the topic and naturally that leads to more confidence and sometimes we're going in blind and optimistic <laughs> and then the reality sets in is, oh my goodness but uh, you know the learning curve was relatively speaking fast and I'd encourage you as it relates to events to, to the same way is like just get in and do your first one rip off the band-aid and then you'll build that that confidence, confidence loop, and you'll feel better about it. The other, th the next thing I wanted to talk about was just making the decision. So with regards to the juicing, I think it's important to dis make the decision on how long the juice fast is gonna be. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I went in thinking, well, maybe we'll do something like 40 or maybe we'll do something like 60 because that's what they do in the movie and then we watched the movie a few days into our juice fast and it was i think on the i, I was a few days in so it was long enough in for us to realize wow this is going to be a lot of work and wow and like physically to make the juice and then also and do all the cleanup but this is going to be a lot of work for us to mentally like stay strong and so we started started reassessing well does it need to be 60 days and the reality is we're watching this movie and you know about a couple of people who are what in there several hundred or 400 pounds each and looking at each other my husband and I going hmm you know we're not fat sick nor nearly dead and perhaps we don't need to copy the movie and go big and do 60. And so that kind of left it open-ended. Well then, okay, how many days is it gonna be? And it kind of, I kind of waffled until, until 21. My husband stopped it after 15. He had to travel for a week and felt like it was just gonna be too much to deal with the juicing on top of the travel schedule. And so he stopped after 15 and I kept going because I definitely felt I, I can do longer than 15. But then around 21, I definitely wanted to quit, but I also knew I could go longer. And it was at that time where I finally decided I'm going to stop at 30. I want to get to 30. That feels like a big accomplishment to me. And also it feels like long enough. And so I just made the decision. And once I did, everything felt better because I had decided I had removed the decision. So quitting, waffling, it wasn't on the table anymore. And, and so I say that about removing the decision because I want to encourage you that once you decide that you're going to produce an event to, to make the decision that it's happening, like it's a done deal. And that whatever obstacles come up, you're going to find a way to move past it that quitting isn't on the table. So having that target is necessary. I love events for that very reason because the date is always, it's there, it's coming in hot, it's not movable. And especially once you've broadcast it and shared it with people, they've started to 
register and book their travel, it just makes it all very real and and raises the necessity, right, for you to make it happen. And so that's my encouragement is just make the decision. Whatever it is that you need to make happen in your life, make the decision because then once it's decided, you've removed the decision, so many other decisions of waffling or quitting. Next thing, same along that same vein, is it's important to make the decision from a place of calm and clarity and peace and not from a, like a frenetic energy, a, a, an energy of like being under pressure and what I mean by that is I made a rule for myself that I was not allowed to quit when or because it was hard. So I'm not going to quit because I'm hangry. I'm not going to quit because we're out for dinner and the food looks amazing. I am not going to quit because we're hanging out with friends and wouldn't it be nice to go to a restaurant together. I'm not going to quit because we're in our, we're at the beach and what we normally would do is have a picnic. Like I decided that I'm going, I'm not going to quit when it's hard. Like I, I get to make the decision when I decided on, okay, it's going to be 30 days, I made that decision from a place of being not hungry and in a really good mood and rested and just totally dialed in and clear. And so I love that is that it's just important to make your decisions when about big things. So the reason why this is really applicable to events is because there's going to be a lot of moments where it's highly stressful. I guarantee it. And I don't want you to make snap decisions in those moments where things are hard because and emotions are high because it's just not a place to make decisions from. Right? I think you can agree that when we're deciding from a place of peace and clarity and calm in our right mind, so to speak, and we're not trying to, I, I think there's a sense of when we're in situations that put us under pressure and have us relying on willpower, it's hard, right? And so let's try and not put ourselves in those situations. But when they come up, especially during events, know that the decision's been removed for you to make decisions, big decisions during those times that you need to take a beat. Even if like time pressure is a real thing, at least take a breather and step back and reset if only for a few minutes so that you're not making a decision from a place of like, pressure and stress. And I think you'll really thank yourself later. I know I'm proud of myself for never making a rash decision from a place of I'm hangry. I also <laughs> noticed a pattern like, okay, I'm, I get hangry if I'm not, if I don't have enough juice. And so what do I need to do to you know, back up this, the, the timeline here to have enough juice made and in the fridge so that when I'm busy and I'm hungry, I have something to go to and I, I can then avoid getting hangry or I just gonna avoid going to restaurants for that month or I'm gonna just avoid doing things that involve food and ironically realize that what our family loves to do is a lot of things that revolve around eating <laughs> going out to eat we kind of love it it's our favorite 
Okay, next thing, totally random, bone broth. It's delicious and high in protein and I had never had it before this juice fast. So I did a little research on what the best organic brand would be. I wasn't gonna make my own. No need to put that extra pressure on myself. <laughs> and turns out it's so delicious and you just have like a 16 ounce glass and you're getting pretty much like 20 grams of protein. How crazy is that? And it's really light in terms of, you know, it's not, I think if you ate the equivalent of like a steak, it would feel really heavy. And it was like lighter, uplifting. And I would encourage that that might be something you start as a habit and continue it on into your event cycle because during an event, that's a pretty awesome way of getting some extra protein in to help with focus and energy. Yeah. Next thing is all about how I love to eat and cook and bake. And I touched on it just a minute ago, but I really do love to cook and bake food for people I love. Like It just brings me so much joy to see people enjoy food that I made. And I realized during this juice fast, that I stopped cooking and baking for the most part. Once I had a kiddo, a kiddo because A, having a kid is really hard and I wasn't sleeping and there just wasn't time. And then as my kiddo got older and became a extremely, an extremely picky eater, I stopped cooking and baking new things because there was really a pretty tight window of things they would eat. And it's been too long, really. It, it like I, I didn't realize how big of a a part of me that is and how long it's been that I've kind of put it in a drawer and I so crazy I spent most of this juice fast watching binging on Ina Garten cooking shows so the Barefoot Contessa I have the Discovery Plus app and so I was just watching commercial free commercial free episodes it's amazing I used to watch it before I had a, a baby and and then I just stopped one day and I binged and watched so many and wrote down so many recipes that I wanted to try and so excited and decided that I'm just going to cook and bake again I, and it's okay if there's only two people in the house eating what I make I'm going to enjoy it. I know my husband's going to love it. And if my kiddo has a nibble, bonus. <laughs> but it's just going to bring me so much joy to explore recipes again, to spend time cooking and baking, and eat stuff that's different than pizza and pasta with red sauce. <laughs> So I'm excited about that. I, it was kind of like, it, this realization is kind of like when I met Audible and entrepreneurship and realized that there, and personal development and realized that there's a whole wide world of books out there that I love to read. And now I just can't stop. And before that, and that was probably age, let's call it like 35, 36, before that, I thought I wasn't a book reader. I thought I only read magazines because every book that I was served up in grade school, in high school, in college, I didn't like. And so I thought books weren't for me. And I think, <laughs> I think this whole realization of, no, really, it, it is my passion to, to cook and bake. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make time for it. I'm gonna, get more dialed in and focused during the day so that I can carve out more time 
after school at night to to cook dinner and I've done that this week and it's been fun <laughs> it's been so fun I uh, I've been following Jesse Itzler over the past week and a half he's doing his um, ride across the United States with nine of his best guy friends and it's so fun to watch and he has this saying that he wants to do more of the things he loves with the people he loves doing them with and for me that means I'm gonna finish my work earlier in the day so I can spend more time cooking and baking for myself and the people I love and so I'm excited about that I'm really excited about that I think it goes back to that whole thing of like raising your necessity I think having something in place that I want to do outside of work because I was finding it was hard every time I every day I journal like what am I excited about it's finding it's hard especially during the during the uh, the juice fast to write something down and it's because I just I didn't have like something exciting in the evening to look forward to and I think this is going to be an excellent thing. It's going to help me raise my necessity, eliminate those distractions, think more creatively. Like, what people do I need to hire in order to help take things off my plate so that I can make more time for this? Uh, next thing is don't rely on willpower. I just finished the book Who Not How by Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. And I but Benjamin Harley also wrote the book Willpower Doesn't Work. <laughs> that title, I think of that title when I when I was writing this journal entry of Don't Rely on Willpower. I cleaned out the pantry on the first day of the juice fast. A, because it needed it. And B, because I just didn't want anything in the way of me completing the juice fast. I didn't want to open the pantry and have it staring back at me with all this stuff that I'm not gonna cook with. And so I I did that. I also didn't cook as much. I my occasionally I got like takeout for my family so that I didn't have to cook or delegated dinner making to them so that I didn't have to cook because that felt like extra hard on top of juicing. And to connect that back to events, don't rely on willpower. You know, we've talked so much about the prep that I want you to do in advance of your event so that you can be at the event and be stress-free about continuing your normal routine. Like that it's already scheduled when you're going to exercise, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, when you're going to eat and drink those things so that your personal care needs, what you're gonna wear, your personal care needs are all taken care of and you can just focus on why you're there, which is is being in community with your people and serving them. Because I just, it's gonna be too hard to rely on willpower during during your event. It's, it's just such a busy time. It's such a busy time. Okay, the next learning makes me laugh and also makes me want to stab someone at the same time. <laughs> it's hard and it gets better. So my husband and I have this ongoing joke because when we had a baby years ago and we had a very challenging baby that did not sleep. <laughs> and I had very specific needs and wants <laughs> without the ability to speak. Very challenging. And people kept saying, oh, it gets better. It gets, gets better. And we just wanted to hate on them so much because it was so hard. And I'm going to say that same beautiful line about juice fasting. It's hard and it gets better. 
The first week with all that newness is such a challenge. And I think I, I, I typically tend to go big. Like that's just in my nature. And I, if I had to do it all over again, I would have done a short juice fast, which is exactly what they, they preach and teach. But I was like, I'm all in. Uh, just so that I could get accustomed to how do I make a menu? How do I shop for that? Like what volume of produce does it require to produce the amount of juice I need? Like, uh, tac like practically, tactically, how do I use this brand new juicer I just bought? What does it take to clean it? How much time does all of that take? You can tell I'm very process and system orientated, which is why I'm such a, an absolute weapon uh, and protein when it comes to event production because there's so many details and because systems help you scale and <laughs> make more money. But as it relates to the juicing, it's that I had to learn to make use that juicer in that first week and how to menu plan and what the process would be and how much produce to buy and where to set everything up and which direction to put the, the cutting board. It wasn't until the very last juicing session that I realized, wait, I cut with my left hand, so let's have the cutting board. It had like one straight end and one end that kind of like hangs on the wall, so it's got a rope and all this stuff. I was like, well, let's put the straight end on the left so that when I cut, I can just like scrape the, the cut ends right off the, the board and slide them into the trash super, super easy. <laughs> it's like that, you know, retentive and detail oriented. But I think that that type of stuff, that learning that you're going to do is, it's hard. It's hard to do that on top of feeling different in your body with me. You know, I think I, I think I was low energy that week too and had headaches and you know, was sleeping different. And also just the, you know, using the willpower of not eating. It's just, it's all hard and new feeling. And to like put on top of that, all of this extra work it felt like of learning the stuff, it's hard. And, you know, and where to get protein and where am I going to get fat from and what app am I going to use to monitor my weight loss and all that stuff just got easier and it's back to that infinity loop of confidence and competence. I think I felt so much better as the weeks went on because I just knew, oh, okay, if I'm going to do this, it's going to take this much time. And if I do this, it's going to take, it's going to set me up for this many I think that the same thing happens with anything in entrepreneurship, right? Once we do it enough, we get that sense of accomplishment, the sense of competence. It just everything sends, tends to land better. I was watching a reel this morning by Sean Cannell. He's a YouTube expert, and he was saying just like get to 100 produce like publishing 100 videos as fast as you can. Just just do that. Because when you do everything that your coach is teaching you about that thing, so <clears throat> get to X, you know, produce, I would say, like produce your first event. Get there as fast as you can. Because once you do, then everything I'm teaching you about events is going to land that much better because you're gonna have gone through a whole cycle and you're gonna know what it takes to do X and Y and Z. And I feel like that with this with this juicing, like now I know what it takes to do this type of a duration and like physically how to do juicing, like juice produce, that it feels like such an easier decision going into the next one. And yes, I'll do more. I don't know if I'll do 30 again. Probably not. But would I do another week-long one? Absolutely. Or work in 
a day maybe every week or every month something like that absolutely and now I know what it takes <laughs> I think monetarily it's far less expensive to buy your own juicer and juice for these longer ones but from a time perspective if you can afford it just go and buy <laughs> buy it <laughs> one of those companies that hooks you up delivers it every few days fresh organic I would do that <laughs> 10 out of 10 stars would, would recommend <laughs> buying the next learning is so good. Food is community. It really brings us together around a table. I noticed that as a family, it was just more, it felt more challenging to sit down and have a family dinner because we weren't all having the same thing. And that didn't feel, it doesn't feel normal. It doesn't feel right. And so I think we did miss out on several of those and it felt almost disconnecting to be on a different meal plan and i'd say when it comes to events i would encourage you if you can fit it into the budget or add it to the ticket price feed your guests meals and i say this because sitting around the table taking that time over lunch at dinner on breaks to eat and drink together is such a powerful connector and a really valuable networking opportunity. And I was sharing that with my mastermind members during our call on Monday this week. And one of them asked, well, but what do you think about how, what do you feel about being, uh, having a lunchtime speaker? And I said, no, because I really love that sense of community that's built when you just allow to decompress, talk about what just happened in session, not have any, having anybody talk at you. You get to talk to the person next to you. It just is a really valuable time for it to just be organic and filled with serendipity, right? So, if you can help it, I say no to speakers during lunch. The next thing that I learned was empowerment. Just a sense of accomplishment. It is absolutely an accomplishment that nobody can ever take away from me. And most people can will never be able to say, that they completed a 30 day juice fast because most people don't have what it takes to go that long without eating, period. It's hard. Same with being an entrepreneur. Most people do not have what it takes to keep going over the long haul. Would you agree? <laughs> and this accomplishment of doing a fast this long is humongous. I'm so proud of myself. And you know, it's kind of like that, that shiny object of getting a, a feature in Forbes, right? Like, no one can ever take that away from you. It's always on your website as social proof. And a juice fast and an event is always something that is on your resume, right? Of things that you've accomplished, your life resume, if you will. I love that concept that Jesse Itzler has of building your life resume. Forget the whole work resume business. Like, what's on your life resume? What's the cool stuff that you've accomplished? And so I think it's really empowering to do something big and to celebrate it and and then to say to yourself, if I can be disciplined and not eat for 30 days, then I can be disciplined about and fill in the blank. Anything is possible, really and truly. It was, it felt that hard that coming out of it, my head is like, I really can do anything. 
if I'm capable of dreaming it up, it's possible. And it's already a done deal. I can make it happen. It's just a matter of committing and making the decision, right? <laughs> the next thing is, that's funny maybe, but I've always wanted to write a cookbook for my family that contains all of our recipes modified for our tastes and our allergies. And so I really want to do that. And I'm going to do that. And I already started. I have a binder and I just like print stuff out and three hole punch it and make notes. But yeah, it was just fun to make that commitment. The other thing I'm thinking about is what can I do from a team perspective to help support my new vision of cooking more? And so and an idea that came to me was hiring a VA to do the menu planning based on my rules. Because I've done those things where you, you know, I've ordered the meal planning services and you get a generic meal plan or you get the meals delivered to your house, but so often they don't fit my preferences or my allergy needs. Like I'm, I'm deathly allergic to tree nuts and have an intolerance to cow's milk and chicken eggs. Like I get a rash, I'm, not, I don't, I'm just not into it. So I don't eat those things and prefer most of the time to eat vegan. And and then I have a kiddo who's super picky. And so I, I it's, it's hard to get something that's customized just for you. So I thought, well, I could hire a VA to do the menu planning based on my rules and my cookbook and order us groceries each week. Instacart has an online app and provide me the menu and the prep list and the instructions. So that's kind of already percolating in the back of my head because I've been on a hiring uh, spree lately. Just definitely inspired by that Who Not How book, but also obviously that's what my one of my favorite mentors, James Wedmore, teaches and just building out the machine. And I think that the more we think about what think outside the box of how can we make something happen and put that lens on when you're thinking about your next event. It's like what was hard about the last one and what would be just a little bit easier if team was supporting you on that aspect this next time. Next thing is focus on one big commitment at a time. <laughs> My mastermind was joking with me about this, how I just, I tend to want to like build a lot of habits at the same time. And it really is helpful to just pick one a month and not try to build like 10 at the same time. And I will get behind that 100%. And also I'm still probably going to make that mistake trying to take on too much. But one big commitment. And I would say doing a juice fast is a big commitment. It, there is a lot of mind share. As much as I said, like I've removed the decision, I'm not quitting. This is what we're doing. This is the plan. It's still, it's a big mental commitment. So I really didn't expect to be as emotional as I was when I got done. I was tearing up. It was hard. So one big commitment at a time. And as it relates to events, if this is your first one, just like take it one at a time. Like don't try to plan your first event and a launch and you know building a new product all at the same time. Like just pick one so that you can focus on it. I think a lot of people were asking me about what symptoms did I experience? I lose any weight, so brass tacks, here you go. Yes, I lost 19.8 pounds, but I like round numbers, so let's just round it up to 20. <laughs> like, Sarah, why didn't you just go another day? Because I decided I was done at 30, and if I had, I definitely would have hit it. 20. Um, 
not that I had a specific number in mind, but I'm proud of that. Symptoms, I definitely had dry mouth, massive dry mouth. I couldn't get enough water. My tongue was white. It was crazy. I had low energy. I don't know what these people who talk about juice fast are talking about when they're like, I had the best energy of my life and didn't want to quit. And I never felt that way. <laughs> um, I talked about I had broken sleep because I just was getting up to go to the bathroom. Lots of number one happening, not a lot, not a lot of number two, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, less sleep, just an hour less per night on average. Lots of vivid dreams, which I'm not used to dreaming, so having dreams was, felt crazy. My husband blew up like a balloon one day after I made, I only did it once, I made um, almond milk in the juicer, and after having a whole glass of it, in under 30 minutes, he was just like blown up huge. And which is crazy because I'm the one with the nut allergy, but almonds aren't nuts, they're part of the apple family, so I can have them. I had no problems, but he got all swollen and itchy. Thankfully, he was fine. And we're gonna send him to the naturopath to get the intolerance test. So that was a crazy thing. Part of me thinks it was because of, he has a pollen allergy. And so sometimes apples make him itchy that were pollinated by, you know, probably the same bees that pollinated the plant that has the pollen that he's allergic to. I think it's like ragweed, something like that. So I thought, well, maybe those same bees were pollinating <laughs> the almonds that I juiced. The, I, I will say it was interesting reintroducing food this week. So the first meal, I had like yogurt and granola, like um, coconut yogurt and granola and some berries and I drizzled honey over it and it was way too sweet for me. I definitely have felt that my taste buds after not having any sugar except for sugar from juice, uh, the, the juice fruits, it definitely reset my taste buds on the level of sweet I need and I'm always known that like, if you want to train yourself to have less sugar then have more like the spinach and the broccoli in your life because you'll just naturally adjust your taste buds I felt that I've felt a reduced capacity for for food so I've just felt fuller faster like it, <laughs> the volume limiter is definitely on uh, but crazy enough my eyes are the same size so I'll still make a plate <laughs> is what I think I want to eat and then not be able to finish it. But it, it seems as the week goes on, I'm getting a little bit back to, to normal. I've also cooked so much this week because I was missing it so much and spent so much time on it. And I definitely will adjust that next week. But it's been fun to eat new food that from those recipes that I printed from binging on Ina Garten shows over the past month. The last thing I'll say on this topic is to just around the concept of keeping going. And that's such a big theme in entrepreneurship, right? The, the difference maker really is in keeping going. And most people don't have what it takes to keep going. And I, whenever I hear that phrase, I see the the image, there's a cartoon out there where it's a miner and you can see the miner, but you can also see what he's like, the, the next part of the, the cave that he's, you see like a cross section of what he's chipping into and he's not getting anything, but you see that there, he's like inches away from just this massive, uh, find of gems and diamonds and I was thinking about that because in the middle of the juice fast and I know you're not supposed to do this but I did it anyways I did get on the scale every single day and while weight loss wasn't the biggest reason for this as we talked about inflammation and just overall health and feeling just a sense of 
you know, like more lightness, more clarity, like a clean out after the pandemic. It was a really important to me. I did step on the scale. We have this cool scale that me measures like body water and protein and bone mass and all that cool stuff. Well, it wasn't moving for at least a week. And it's really disheartening because it feels like so much work to not eat and then to have like not have immediate gratification because the first week there is a lot of immediate gratification <laughs> like it's almost as if you get several pounds off of a day it's just crazy but to not have that and have that stall was disheartening and i think that it's very common in entrepreneurship to have dry spells, if you will, like long stretches where our work is not paying off with immediate results. And our job is to keep going, period. Our job is to keep going. And I had to keep reminding myself of that. Like my job is to keep going. So ignore that the number hasn't changed. Your job is to keep going. And I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did because now I've got that feather in my cap. I completed a 30 day juice fast. So that was probably more than you bargained for. <laughs> but I wanted to get all of my learnings out and was hoping that my experiences might help you and in some small way. If you have questions, drop into my DMs over on Instagram. I appreciate you being here with me today and wish you the most outstanding week. Take care.